all across America and around the world. This is Veterans Radio. This is Veterans Radio. And now, your host for today's program, Dale Throneberry. I want to welcome you to our program. We've had some wonderful technical issues already today, as most of you out there that are listening live will are, are well aware of. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, we're, we've got a number of guests today that I want to mention. Uh, number one is right off the top is we're going to be talking, um, excuse me, with the Medal of Honor Museum at Patriots Point. They're uh, reopening their museum, and I've got Laura Jowdy with us. She will be joining me shortly. And then we're going to move right into an interview with Bob Taylor. He's the CEO of the Patriots Promise Foundation in Michigan. And uh, so I'm really excited to talk to him. And he's an Air Force guy. So we're going to be talking, you know, big planes, little planes, things like that. As we turn the bottom of the hour, we've got an interview with Keith King of the National Veterans Business Development Council. Uh, They're celebrating their 10th anniversary in That will take us probably up to toward the end of the program. Also in the studio with me is Nick McBrien. And uh, Nick, welcome back. Oh, he's frozen. So Always good to be here. (laughs) It's it's always good to be anywhere. Um, So before we get into the program real quick, I got to make sure that we thank our sponsors because we can never do this program without them. Uh, number one is uh, Legal Help for Veterans. Legal Help for Veterans specializes in veterans' disability claims. Give Legal Help a call at 800-693-4800. The National Veterans Business Development Council, better known as NVVDC, is the nation's leading third-party authority for certification of veteran-owned businesses. If you want to do business with the federal government and you want to claim to be a, a veteran-owned business, you got to get certified. So these are the people to talk to. You can go to their website, that's nvbdc.org, or give them a call at 888-237-8433. The Charles S. Kettles VA Medical Center here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. For more information about them, go to va.gov slash Ann Arbor Healthcare. I also want to make sure that we thank our uh, local veterans organizations for their longtime support of Veterans Radio. Almost 20 years, over 20 years now. Uh, that's the Irwin Prescott and American Legion Post 46 and the Charles S. Kettles Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 310, both of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hey, if you want to get in on the action and sponsor a really great program for veterans, all you got to do is go to our website, veteransradio.org, and click on the media, and you'll find all kinds of information there if you would like to become a sponsor or if you just want to make a small donation. Uh, Quick reminder is that Veterans Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Okay, so joining me on the line, and I'm not sure where she's going to be coming from, either either Zoom or the phone, is uh, Laura Jowdy. And uh, Laura is the Society's resident archivist. So Laura, welcome to Veterans Radio. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Well, thank you for joining us. So the Medal of Honor Museum at Patriots Point has, um, looks, sounds like you've done some remodeling. Tell us all about that. Well, it's entirely reimagined. Um, we more or less gutted what was there before. And what we have now um, is a gem of a facility. It's got something for everyone. Um, it emphasizes the recipients as people, which is, you know, they did extraordinary things. And of course, we're honored with our nation's highest military medal for valor in combat, but they were people first. And so what we've done is created a museum that honors them while also recognizing their humanity, um, which of course makes it more inspirational for visitors. I think it sounds really cool because this whole thing is on the, it's on the USS Lexington, right? Well, it's on the USS Yorktown, which is a retired aircraft carrier at Patriots Point, um, just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. And um, we're on the hangar deck, which is, you know, a phenomenal location. Patriots Point's been a wonderful host for the museum since 1994. So we're, we're just thrilled with the location and the number of visitors we get and the chance to really reach the public in this manner. So what's, uh, what's coming up with your celebration on uh, the 25th? On the 25th, we are going to have historical reenactors for various conflicts from the Civil War all the way to the Vietnam War. So they'll be there, you know, distrib- distrib- 
<laughs> demonstrating their equipment to the public who maybe don't know, you know, how things were used or what life was like. We're going to have a completely um, restored World War II era Jeep um, on property for people to look at and investigate. We're going to have um, some giveaways, a raffle or two. You know, it is a celebration, the reopening of this museum. And, you know, it's, it's highly interactive. So we're particularly interested in watching um, how children and families embrace the museum and the stories that are told there. Well, it, it sounds pretty cool. What, tell us about your, um, if, if, since not all of us can get to South Carolina, um, mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us where we can go and find more information. You can always find more information at the Congressional Medal of Honor Society's website, which is the initials of the organization, cmohs.org. Okay. And so, um, let's see, I'm making sure what I got here. So you, you are involved in the archival work. What, what is that? How would you define that for our, our, for our audience? Well, um, in a capsule, um, it's like a librarian for old things. <laughs> My job is to take care of and preserve um, p actual pieces of history. And I also take care of, it, usually an archive is going to be, you know, paper and books. So I, of course, take care of those. But I also take care of the physical artifacts we have as well, of which there are many in the museum. And if you go to our website, you can also see a database of all 3,500 plus recipients of the Medal of Honor. So there's a lot of sort of legacy and history to be taught on our website. Well, it sounds like a great organization, obviously, and I know that you are sanctioned by, by Congress in order to do this. And, and so the website, again, is uh, cmohs.org. There's all kinds of really great information there. They're having their grand reopening on the 25th of the month. And I would encourage people down in the South Carolina area to head on over to, to uh, Patriots Point and uh, check this whole thing out, especially the, the deck of the Yorktown. I, this, these decks of these aircraft carriers are really cool. I know I've, I've been to the Intrepid in New York City and uh, it's pretty fascinating. So I, again, I encourage you, I wanna thank you for all that you do obviously for the organization and, and thank you for keeping alive the stories of all these amazing men, men and women. Oh, you're very welcome. And it's my honor really to have this opportunity to preserve this part of American history and hopefully inspire a new generation to rise to service. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much. Laura Jowdy. Right, you're welcome. From the uh, Medal of Honor Museum at Patriots Point. Okay. So we kind of fell a little bit behind in our uh, schedule here. So uh, <laughs> um, joining me now, right now, is um, well, we've got Nick McBrien, who is kind of joining in on the conversation as well, and Bob Taylor. And Bob, let me find your information here real quick. And it's, it says, according to your website, it says, from service to success, you share real life experiences, you were, uh, let's see, a mechanical engineering degree from that school, of, no, from Michigan State University. <laughs> uh, joined the Air Force, 1987, uh, stationed at Griffiths Air Force Base in New York. I hadn't heard of that one. Deployed to Diego Garcia. That's where it sounds pretty cool, or at least it sounds cool. Uh, you flew 11 combat missions during Operation Desert Storm, of course, the Mayor Mayor Medal. Uh, you started as a K KC-135 navigator and finally as a liaison officer with the Air Force Marines. Uh, in your civilian life, you um, did some great things. I'm going to ask, ask to bring you right on. So, Bob Taylor, welcome to Veterans Radio. Thank you, Dale. Thank you for having me. All right. So let's, let's talk about, you know, your transition i mean that's that's what we're going to be talking about today mostly is your, your transition from the military into private life how did that go for you sure well i think with uh, veterans there's a kind of a vast um difference in the stories on how we all transition uh actually when i when i left the air force i was very fortunate uh, my best friend in college was working for a medical device company in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I was uh, very fortunate to uh, 
to land a job there as a R and D engineer for uh, designing medical devices for surgery. And uh, by all indications, everything was was going great. And um, like many other veterans, as we go through some of our experience, some of our combat experience, we kind of tuck away some some of our experience, some of our challenges, and um, some of those circumstances pop up later in life. And uh, for me, it it uh, caused some some challenges, and uh, I was able to kind of get through that with some help from the VA and in uh, over a long period of time. So, um, you know, some some people transition very easily. Some people, some veterans. Um, have challenges right out of the gate, and then some. Some seem to be going along, and then experience some challenges down the road. And that was that was kind of my story. Yeah, I know that there's. Um, I can relate to that. <laughs> I thought I, I thought everything was fine when I got out of the service, and then it kind of got all screwed up midway. It seems like out there somewhere, 10, 15 years later, and. Um, I know that you, uh, you know, you've written a book about this, and you've also started a foundation. Can you tell me a lot about the Patriot Promise and what what that entails? Sure. So uh, it was about seven years ago I started doing research on on the book that I wrote, and uh, and it took me six years to to finally write it, and it and it was published. Just came out about a year ago, and um, the the premise of the book for me was that. If I was having uh, challenges, I figured that there were others, and I wanted to do some research to find out just how prevalent the the issues were, and I wanted to share my story, but not only my stories, but also those of other veterans, and then I wanted to um, to make sure that I laid out in the book from from service to success. I wanted to lay out a roadmap that you know if if we do certain things, we have the potential to not only survive, but to thrive and reach our highest potential. And so that, um, based on the book, I started the Patriot Promise Foundation. And the the primary effort of the foundation is to create an academy called the Patriot Promise Academy. And the, the purpose of the academy is to teach, you know, when we went in to the military, we went in through either basic training or officer's training school or through one of the academies or there, there's just a, a host of ways. But the the uh, foundation of the training is the same. They take us from all of our many different backgrounds and all of our different personalities and they change us to be change us to focus on one mission and one purpose. And that's to either fly, fight, win, uh you know, to go into combat, to fight an enemy and to prevail and to overcome tremendous obstacles. And they do a fantastic job of training us. And as you know, as a helicopter pilot, you probably felt like you were pretty um, prepared to do just about anything with that, with that helicopter sure. under some unbelievable challenges. And uh, so when we leave the military, we give up a lot of things that we've become accustomed to. One is the training that that um, prepares us to be phenomenally successful against all odds, and the the tribe that we form, the the camaraderie and the the friendships and the people that we rely on and and who rely on us. And there's there's really very few things in the in our life that has as much meaning as making sacrifices for other people. And when we leave the military, it's not really clear where we fit and what we can do. And so the purpose of the Academy is to, is to kind of retrain our mindset, retrain us to be prepared for this new life outside of the military. And like I said, not only to survive, but to thrive. And uh, I believe that military people have the raw materials to be as successful as anyone else in society. I think that's, you know, that's an interesting point that you make is that, you know, while we are 
while we are in the military, we're provided with everything. You know, our food, lodging, every everything. And, you know, then we go to, you know, we go to back to civilian life and it's suddenly we're, we're, we're on our own. And you know, our schedules were pretty, um, I don't know, you know, rigid, I guess you could say. Our schedules were pretty rigid while we were in the service. You know, and again, we come out, we have all, you know, all this free time and so forth. And we're trying to figure out what it is that we're going to do. And um, I know that this has changed dramatically over the years, especially, you know, in, in talking with Nick that, you know, the, the transition out of the service in today's world is a lot more efficient, I guess you could say, or hopefully more efficient, where there's more opportunities, let's put it that way, for, for the military uh, people that are transitioning out. But you still have that same thing. You, you know, you, 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 you lose your, that camaraderie you were talking about in many cases. I mean, again, social media today can still connect with people, but it's, it's, it, I don't know, it's just not the same. So how can, how can we help these men and women that are so talented. I mean, today's military has probably got the most intelligent people in it ever. And I, so how do we? And, the, and I think the training is even more um, highly effective and and targeted and focused. And so I think, you know, very intelligent people that are going in the military and extremely um, highly effective training that prepares us to do um, pretty unbelievable things. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, as, and and I guess that because, you know, we've talked about this before on Veterans Radio, and we're talking with Bob Taylor here, and he's CEO of an organization um, that is really out there to help, help veterans and just I I admire everything that that you're you know that that you've done and that you are continuing to do, um, and and I'm just trying to figure out, you know what what else can we do? What else can you know? You mentioned you wanted to set up this academy, and I guess I kind of cut you off. What, what what are we going to do with this academy? So the academy starts out with uh, assessing where the veteran is. At that moment in time, you know, are they healthy? Are they kind of uh, in a good place in their mental health? Uh, do they have the basics, you know, with a job and, and uh, you know, just kind of helping them assess where they are in their life. And then we start to go into the program to explain what they went through, uh, you know, what happened when they went through basic training or officer's training or whatever their training was, what happened when they went through advanced training. And then what we start to discuss the differences about military life and civilian life. And then what are some basic things that they can do to really start to make their lives better? Um, one of the things, just a simple exercise of gratitude, for example, um, it sounds silly, but being grateful for the things that you have in the, in the situation that you're in, if, if you start to really practice gratitude intentionally, like writing a list of things that you're grateful for, all of a sudden your mind starts to shift and you start to recognize more and more things that you're actually grateful for and that you're in a better situation than you might really understand. And so the practice of gratitude really does help us shift our mind from you, you can't wallow in misery and be grateful at the same time. So the effort is to kind of shift our mindset to be grateful. The other thing is, like you said, we, we kind of lose some of our camaraderie. And so what we have to do is we have to start identifying people that we come in contact. We have to start forming new relationships and appreciate the people that are around us because chances are the people that are around us when we leave the military, are the ones that 
were praying for us when we were off on our missions or the people that care deeply about us. And we need to really kind of value those those relationships, even though they're not military, even though they don't understand everything that we went through uh, in our military experiences or the stresses and the strains of life that we're going through, they still care deeply about us. And they they can bridge the gap of just being without those uh, same buddies that you were with when you were in the military. And then the other thing is we have to start devoting ourselves to something that's greater than just ourselves. If we kind of just focus on what our own needs are and the challenges that we face in the, in the difficulties of life, which by the way, everybody has, everyone experiences some, some tremendous challenges. And if we just focus on our own um, needs and our own wants, um, it, it's not as fulfilling. And so that's what I've dedicated, you know, my life to is, is trying to help other veterans to try and help, you know, in the, I, I'm the owner and CEO of a medical device company. And I really focus on trying to help the people that work for me to, to really achieve um, their, their greatest potential. And when you can devote yourself to something great, that is greater than yourself, you start to experience something that you didn't really expect. And so those are some of the things that are in the academy is to teach people how to change their mindset, to be more grateful, to look around them and to, to find new relationships, new friends, and then find a passion. And hopefully that passion is serving people in ways that are just greater than what you can accomplish on your own. So if, if I wanted to go to your academy, maybe a little too late for me, but it's, it's never too late. Um, it absolutely is not too late. And I've, I've actually been um, approached and, and I've spoken to groups where people your age, my age, um, you know, they, they're still going through some of these challenges from decades ago. My issues really didn't come into full light until 16 years after I left. So um, we always are in a, in a time of our life that we can benefit from some of these uh, mindset changes. We are talking with Bob Taylor here. He is uh, the CEO and founder of the Patriot Promise Foundation. And we're, talking about the this academy and it I, I think this is sounds really interesting to me so is this uh in person or is it on like a zoom call or do, do you have to, to do i have to come to wherever you are so the the academy is still being uh created but it's uh designed to be an online uh kind of learn on your own pace there's another program called civilian ready which is a which is a um, sounds like a, a very good program. They take veterans and they kind of put them all together in a in what they call a cohort, and they go through classes together. And there's some benefits in going through a class together. Ours is designed to be more kind of learn at your own pace. Um, if you need to hear a, a certain lesson multiple times, you can do that. If you want to kind of speed through some sections and pick up some uh, some time, but uh, it'll be online learning. Uh, everyone will receive a workbook. Uh, there's certain books that we're going to recommend um, people read and and study as part of this program. So it's it's about uh, ten to twelve weeks to go through this online classes. Some can take longer. Some can probably go through a little bit faster. I know I've, I've taught online classes and sometimes they're, it's, it's okay. You know, most of the time, if, especially if you do the work, that's, well, that's like everything else. Do the work, follow the assignments and you'll be fine. Um, so, so what other things are you planning to do with the Patriot Promise Foundation, Bob? So the, uh, the, the primary purpose was, you know, I, I spent so much time 
writing this book from service to success tagline of it is new mission, new purpose, and a, and a great new, great journey to a great life. And so all I want to do is get that information into the hands of the veterans. And so uh, our website, the um, Patriot Promise Foundation, uh, people can go there, they can buy a book and donate several copies. And we do, what we do is we take those books and we take them to different VAs. Uh, we send them to different organizations and they distribute them out to veterans. And uh, I'm I'm very honored and I'm very happy that as people have read through the book, um, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback that um, for, you know, you write a book and you hope that people kind of can benefit from it. And I don't expect that people are going to turn it into a, a manual of how to live their lives. But if you can get one or two profound messages from that book, that's all I, that's all I can ask for. And I've, I've gotten some messages from people that were, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, ending their lives and uh, have found motivation from what they read to, um, to dedicate themselves to learning some new ways. And um, that's, all I could ever hope for. If if that's the only person I reached out to right. and, and made a difference, that's, that's all I could ever ask. I, I think that's, that's so important that, that the, the veteran community as well as the civilian community realize that there are people out there who really do care about you and will do anything that, that they can or we can to help you, you know, get through whatever it is that's dragging you down and, you know, making you think about ending it at all. So I would encourage you to to go to um, Bob's website. It's patriotpromise.org. And I understand that you are a nonprofit organization. And uh, can we make a donation there? Absolutely. Just uh, go on the on the website. You can uh, go right to the, the part of the website for donations. And uh, we're, you know, every penny that we get, we turn into either um, getting the books in the hands of the veterans or we're uh, using those funds to, to get veterans through this Patriot Promise Academy. Uh, we are having a, a big golf event. Uh, we've joined forces with the, the organization called Folds of Honor, which is mm -hmm. well known all over the United States. And uh, they have a mission of, you know, for Gold Star families of educating their children, giving them scholarships so that they can go through college. And so as we spoke to them, uh, you know, teaching the Gold Star, you know, getting the Gold Star families into their education and also helping to teach veterans how to transition and, and pursue the highest level of performance in their lives seemed like a very um, good synergy. And so we've partnered up and we're having a, a golf outing called uh, the Greatest Honor Golf Classic, which is August 19th. And uh, we're, I'm just, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can raise and, and uh, get veterans into this academy. Well, we're gonna, I'm going to support this. I've got an, I've, Next, sent me a note here is that it's on the 19th. Oops, go up, there we go. Golf event, August 19th, Monday, August 19th at the American Dunes Golf Course in Grand Haven, Michigan. Um, worth walking And if, you, if you've never been to that golf course, uh, there's a, you walk through an entrance and it's almost hallowed ground. It's a memorial for uh for different veterans and the sacrifices they've made it's actually difficult for me to go through there multiple times so um it's just um very captivating and it's humbling and uh but it is a absolute uh gorgeous um golf course and um it's kind of the home of the folds of honor and, and the american dunes is just a, a beautiful place 
All right. Well, I would encourage you to. We're going to put that information up on our website. And um, Bob Taylor, I want to thank you so very much for being on Veterans Radio. The book is From Service to Success. You can get it on their website, patriotpromise.org. And if you buy one, they give away two. If you buy a bunch, they give away a bunch more. So I encourage everybody to go to that website, uh, patriotpromise.org. And Bob, thank you so much for your time and your patience today. And I uh, look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Oh, it's a great pleasure. And, and um, in spite of all the technical challenges, uh, you guys made me feel right at home and very gracious host. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bob. Hey, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. We are going to take a real quick break here and, uh, for our Medal of Honor segment. Uh, and then when we come back, I'll introduce the interview with uh, Keith King from the National Veterans Business Development Council. So you're listening to Veterans Radio. We'll be right back. The Medal of Honor is the highest award for valor in combat given a member of the Armed Forces of the United States. There have been over 3,400 recipients of the nation's highest award. This is one of them. War Officer Frederick Ferguson led a four-ship helicopter formation into a South Vietnamese Army compound under heavy fire. Details after this. If you have a VA claim denied by the Board of Veterans Appeals, contact Legal Help for Veterans at 1-800-693-4800. They're experts in handling cases before the U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. Their number again, 1-800-693-4800. After completing a hitch on the Navy, Ferguson got his commercial pilot's license and then joined the Army to fly helicopters. Two weeks after graduating from helicopter school, he was in Vietnam. On January 31, 1968, Ferguson heard that a first cavalry helicopter had gone down in Hue, and another had been badly shot up trying to rescue them. Ferguson and his crew agreed to go get them. While refueling, he asked three Huey gunships if they wanted to accompany him. They did. The GIs in the compound reported they were under heavy fire. Ferguson circled until the fire abated, then began a low-level high-speed run into the compound. He descended blindly in a dust storm from his rotors. When he touched down, he saw there was only one foot clearance on each side of his blades. The GIs jumped aboard and Ferguson pulled up. A mortar shell exploded under his aircraft, spinning it 180 degrees. One of the Hueys was shot down and the crew rescued. The other two were so badly shot up by the time they landed, they were no longer able to fly. Ferguson received his Medal of Honor from President Nixon on May 17, 1969. The Medal of Honor series is a production of Veterans Radio. Military veterans touch everyone's life. I'm guessing right now you're thinking of a veteran, a close friend, relative. Maybe it's you. Even the toughest among us sometimes need help, but don't know where to turn for support. You don't need special training to help a veteran in your life. If you know a veteran in crisis, don't wait. Reach out. Call the Veterans Crisis Line at 988, then press 1. 988 Press 1. A message from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And we're back here on Veterans Radio. And as many of you know, over the last couple of years, one of our main sponsors and supporters has been NVBDC, the National Veteran Business Development Council. And so uh, coming up right now is a kind of a, a review of what they've been up to for the last 10 years. So my partner, Jim Falcone, interviewed uh, Keith King, founder and CEO of NDBDC, last week. And so we're going to play that interview right now. So stick around after we've got some uh, announcements that we need to make here on Veterans Radio. So here's Jim Falzone and Keith King. I am Jim Falzone, and this is Veterans Radio Spotlight on the National Veteran Business Development Council, well known as nvbdc.org. And we're honored today to have with us its founder and CEO, Keith King. Welcome back, Keith, to Veterans Radio. Well, thank you, Jim. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Well, as our list, regular listeners know, NVBDC is the nation's leading third-party authority for certification of veteran-owned businesses, really of all sizes. And we're kind of talking today because it's about 10 years uh, that this nonprofit uh, that got started back in 2013 has been certifying companies. Uh, I think that's a great place to start, uh, Keith. 
give us a little, hey, what's going on after this decade of uh, certifying veteran-owned businesses? Well, you know, we never, you know, and we talk to obviously a lot of businesses and small or any business that's been in up and operating for a few years. Um, the tenth year always seemed to be one of those, you know, anniversaries that you should pause and say, "Hey, um, I not only made it ten years, but we actually have been certifying our veteran-owned businesses for ten years now." And you know, people have said, "Well, what have you done in ten years?" <laughs> you know. Um, and, and that's one of these things that really what we're trying to do is put out some of the information that I think is surprising to not only our veterans, but to our corporate members. Um, and I know one of them is we went back into our files and we have actually certified over 3,000 veterans. So, you know, we're there, we're pounding, and we continue to grow. Well, and that, that level of certification has certainly also turned into a lot of contracts for certified veteran-owned businesses. And I know the Billion Dollar Roundtable did some analysis, and there's some other analysis of how big the market is for certified veteran-owned businesses. And as I said, NVBDC is the gold standard for this. Give us some sense of how big the market is. Well, I'll start with the one that probably is the closest to my heart in the sense of they did, they being the BDR, did a uh, impact study. And in that impact study, what they do, among all the other information they gather, is they have each of their members report the contract amount, of what we call the spend, per category, women, minorities, veterans. And when they came out and said, well, the members of the Billion Dollar Roundtable reported that they have spent $4.3 billion with our veteran-owned businesses. And we went, well, <laughs> um, that's even bigger than I could dream. So. <laughs> and and that's that's not over the 10-year period we're talking about, right? That That's no, a... That's, right. That's an annual last spend. Year. Yes, that was last year, 23. And um, now that we're working with them even closer with all of these things, one of the side, if you will, um, you know, the guys who love the numbers, we, in this impact study, said, does anybody know how much money is in the supplier diversity market, if you will, as a whole? And they actually said, yeah, it was a $122 billion market. And as you know, Jim, I keep talking about I want a bigger piece of this pie. Yep, yep, <laughs> that's what our veteran business owners want, absolutely. Well, at $122 billion, I, I think I'm finally getting people's attention. You know? Well, I would hope so. And that's that's a, is that a corporate spend or is that a government spend or a combination? No, neither. Strictly the 30, now 32 at the time, it was um, 26, 27 uh, corporation um, that spent that much with our veterans. And I know in the opening you mentioned, um, you know, that we certify, you know, small, medium, and large. And we have a corporation now that is over $2 billion, veteran-owned. Um, you know, we had one that was at a nine hundred million a year. Uh, we had eighteen hundred employees in five countries. So that was one of the one of the issues I think right from the beginning that our corporate members really drove home, really helped us. They said, "Don't ever get caught up in the small business." You know, everybody loves a small business, but if you're sitting here talking to, you know, some of the largest corporations in the world, we need to make sure that if we're hiring somebody as a supplier that they can, in fact, meet our demands, you know, and, and do it the, whatever they need to do uh, to have the ability to, you know, expand and, and meet our goals. And uh, that's how we got to the point we are. Well, and it's important because uh, the government had some programs not very successful 
in ways of certifying and and they were for small business veteran-owned businesses and you can kind of could grow out of them which wasn't yeah. really good for the anybody in the sequence but that's sort of the problem with a government-run uh, program and last time we talked the Congress was moving certification out of the hands of the VA and over to the SBA, but that really hasn't gotten up and running very well, has it? Well, um, I hesitate only because... Okay, I, I can say told, it hasn't. <laughs> well, that's okay. I, you know, what are they going to do? You know, can't fire me. You know, what, what they did is they had, and I know we discussed that, that originally the plan was that the SBA was not going to, in essence, raid the VA, that they were going to go and build, you know, their whole new team, build a whole new program. That was a lie. And unfortunately, in that form, um, they brought, and I spent a lot of time with these guys, they basically brought the key executives of the VA running the CVE or their verification program to the SBA. And I was like, well, what happened to you're not going to be allowed? Well, I guess, you know, depending on your point of view, if you cry and whine enough, maybe somebody will say, yeah, okay, go ahead and hire them. Yeah, they just took the easy way out rather than creating, and this is what the beauty of NVBDC is, it's really a rigorous certification process. You really got to prove yourself up. And then there's some comfort to the corporate America that this certification was rigor, rigorous enough to withstand scrutiny, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, again, um, I always try to acknowledge the, you know, the National Women's Group called We Bank and the National Minority Group who were truly our mentors, um, you know, I joke about it that, you know, they said, yeah, you know, we'll take pity on you. Come on, we'll teach you. But they did. And, you know, it took, that was like a 15 month process for us to take, learn what the rules are, learn why they do what they do, then write up the SOP and write up, you know, the whole program, design it, and then implement it. And that's what we did basically 10 years ago in April. So, uh, you know, it was just a few weeks ago. It would have been actually spot on 10, uh, uh, 10 years. So um, we're always acknowledging and always thanking those groups for teaching us and for the corporations uh, for accepting us because – um, I get these calls more often than, than not of, you know, somebody will ask me a question and I'll jump into it and they go, no, that's enough. Okay, we believe you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, that, and, and that's really important and that's why you should celebrate 10 years of success because yep. when you have that kind of rigorous standard and people say, well, that's a gold standard, we don't have to look any farther, you get opportunities to do things and and partner with other groups that have similar reputations and you have one of those going on at the moment with the international trade association tell me what that's about well what we have been talking to them about is really how many if you will expats how many patriots do we have all over the world and a lot of the guys who got out of the military in germany is probably one of the ones england definitely Philippines, Guam, there are a lot of Americans living overseas, running what they call a veteran-owned business. And our whole, you know, position is, really? How do you know they're veterans? Right. So, you know, the ITA said, you know, the knowledge, and I think that's one of the things that we've been really proud of, is when you see the knowledge and you actually jump into what our veterans, well, soldiers, if you will, are being taught today. You know, I make the comment all the time, where do you think cybersecurity came from? You know, I mean, this is all military-based right. technologies, right? And so we have some very 
highly trained, very sophisticated people, you know, running businesses all over the world. And the ITA said, first off, we would love to know if they're really veterans. And secondly, you know, we'd love to work with you and see how many other people we have here stateside who would like, you know, to start looking at doing, you know, international trade. And they have, man, these guys got some incredible programs. And so, you know, what we said is, well, let's start putting programs together. Let's put webinars together. Let's put meetings together. Um, We're involved with the UN um, weekly uh, program. Uh, You know, besides the ones I've told you about, another group called Vets Go Global. So between the ITA, uh, Vets Go Global, and the UN, we are definitely, you know, building it and trying to make sure that whatever we do, in the sense of going international, is we've got the main and the key players who will help us. So, well, one of the things I want to do before we get into two other, three other areas that I want to talk about is I want to say to veteran-owned business owners who are listening, if you think certification is something that you ought to go on and do. Go to nvbdc.org. They will help you through this process. It is important that you realize it'll be rigorous. You'll have to provide a lot of information, but that's exactly what you want coming out the other end so that when you have work opportunities, bid opportunities with corporate America, they know you're the real deal. So go to nvbdc.org. That's the easiest way to get started and uh, reach out because they'll help you get going. All right, that was Jim Falzon talking with Keith King from NVBDC, National Veterans Business Development Council, uh, with an interview a couple of weeks ago. They're celebrating their 10th anniversary of certifying veteran-owned businesses. Got a couple of things that I want to talk to you real quickly about. Uh, Veterans Radio has a fundraiser coming up next Sunday, the 26th of May, and it's going to be at the Carlisle Grill in Ann Arbor out on Jackson Avenue, and you'll be able to find more information on our website, but it's uh, <clears throat> they're going to be splitting their proceeds with us uh, as part of our fundraiser, as I remind you that we are a nonprofit 501c3, so I would really like you to come on out. you get to meet all the people that seem to enjoy Veterans Radio around here. The other thing that's coming up is um, next week is Memorial Day, is going to be Memorial Day's program as well. And we're going to try something new this year. And so I need your help uh, to accomplish this. I would like to read off the names of veterans and military personnel who have died in the past. And it can be either a relative of yours or, um, I mean, we've got, obviously, we have names of of veterans that we can read out that we've lost here in our local area. But I would really like you to, uh, if you'd like to honor a a family member or something along those lines, to just send an email to info at veteransradio.org. It's info at veteransradio.org and tell us who they are, maybe where they served, if they were, you know, if they were uh, killed in action or if they've died recently as a result of being exposed like so many of us have been. Uh, this is what I would really like to try and do next uh, for next Sunday's program. So again, just if you th- can think of somebody that you would like to honor, just send us an email with their name and what they did in the service to info at veteransradio.org. And I think that would be great. I um, appreciate you uh, doing that. Um, also, I want to do, uh, thank Nick McBride for being on the program today and for promoting uh, the um the uh, I keep looking at it. Patriots Promise Foundation and their upcoming golf outing. So, uh, Nick, thanks very much. Keep bringing those stories to us. Hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to keep keep them rolling for the rest of the year. <laughs> I'm excited. I am excited. Nick has been great. Has opened up a whole new uh, audience to us and a whole uh, access to more people. So we've got to go right now. So until next week, this is Dale Thornberry for all of us here at Veterans Radio. You are dismissed.